This lesson deals with an audio frequency integrator example. You can find these notes in the ECE 202 ebook in chapter 12, starting on page 18. Let's take the integrator that we stabilized in supplemental problem 11.2, and let's solve for V out of S over V in of S. Let's then sketch the body plots, of, and then let's verify it with PSPICE. The circuit is an inverting amplifier whose gain is minus Z2 over Z1. In this case, Z1 is just a resistor R1. Because I have two elements in parallel, I like to take the admittances add them up, and then take the reciprocal. So I'm going to write Z2 as 1 over Y2. Parallel combination would be SC2 plus 1 over R2. And then we have just a 1 over R1. Let's multiply numerator and denominator by R2. That gives me an R2. SC2, R2, and then plus 1. I'll bring that R1 over here. R2 was 100K. R1 was 1K. C2 was 0.1 microfarad. R2 was equal to 100K. And so we've got our transfer function in S. Let's do some more factoring. This ratio is equal to 100. Product of these two is 10 to the fifth times 10 to the minus six times 10 to the minus one. That gives me a 10 to the minus two. And then I just have a one. Multiply the numerator and denominator by 100. That gives me 10 to the fourth, which is 10K, a one, and then 100. So my transfer function is minus 10K over S plus 100. Now to sketch the body plots, you have to replace S by J omega. We're looking for the steady state response versus frequency. So I have a minus 10K over J omega plus 100. Now we need to make this look like our forms pull out 100 from the denominator. That's going to leave me with a 1 plus j omega over 100. Pull out the 10k and the minus sign. So this ratio is equal to 100. And then multiplied by 1 over 1 plus j omega over omega c, where omega c is 100. That now is our form 1 and our form 5. So let's sketch this form 1. It's going to be 20 log of the magnitude. And 20 log of 100 is 40 dB. It's got a dotted line showing that value. The minus sign doesn't show up in the magnitude, just the angle. In fact, it's right here. It's 180 degrees. And then our form 5 has an omega c at 100. Suppose 100 radians per second is here. So below this, I have a slope of 0 dB per decade, and above it, minus 20. So here for one decade, I drop 20 dB. The phase angle, we're down 45 degrees at omega c, which is 100. Go back a decade, it's 0. Go forward a decade, it's minus 90. And now we want to add the results together. Well, here we just have a constant added to this form 5. We're just going to lift this up by 40 dB. Likewise, for our phase angle, we're just going to lift this up by 180 degrees. My result goes between plus 180 and then plus 90. I picked the value here to give me my final result between plus 180 and minus 180. A little bit easier to visualize what that's going to look like in the time domain if you're looking at an oscilloscope in lab. We usually don't plot versus radians per second. Let's change this to hertz by just dividing each term by 2 pi. 100 becomes 15.9 and so on. And likewise on this scale. An integrator is having a transfer function which is k over s. It's going to be really our graph right here. So for this frequency range, which is greater than 15.9, we have a slope of minus 20 dB per decade, which is really a 1 over j omega term. It's this term right over here when the 1 isn't important. And that's our integrator. We're integrating anything above 15.9 hertz. I took the SPICE file and supplemental problem 11.2 and modified it so I could do my body plot sketches. I started by changing the title from integrator to audio frequency integrator, and I'll explain that shortly. We're doing a dot transient analysis. Let's change that to a AC analysis, so dot AC. And then I correspondingly have to change the input from a sine wave to a phaser. And we do that with AC. And they give the magnitude and angle of the input in this case, which I want to make equal to 1 so that my output voltage is the transfer function. The phase angle is 0, but you don't have to type that because the default is 0. For the dot AC command, let's sketch from, say, 0.1 hertz to 100 kilohertz. And we have to figure out how many decades that is. From 0.1 to 1 to 10 to 100, to 1,000, to 10,000, to 100,000 is six decades. So I divide 200 by six, and you get about 33. About 200 points on the graph, you see that smooth line that's over here. I found the 3 dB frequency, and found that to be about 15.849 hertz. Again, I have a finite number of points here, and this is the closest to being down 3 dB from the 40 dB that I have at low frequencies. I drew the asymptotes on top of this, to find the frequency 15.9, and so here is actually 10 hertz. Then I had a technique on page 15 where I estimated, based on this distance, where certain frequencies were. And I found the frequency right here of 15.9. Sketch that as my corner frequency. And you can see pretty much I'm hugging the asymptotes for frequencies below 15.9 hertz and then likewise for above. I'm rolling off here at minus 20 dB per decade. I called it an audio frequency integrator because in this range we're doing the integration, so above 15.9 hertz. And then when we get outside the audio band, the gain of this circuit is very low, and so it can eventually be buried in the noise of the circuit. Take a look at the phase angle. In this last graph, I showed the output voltage, which was node 3. I label that as VDB3. 
For the phase angle, it's the phase angle of the numerator of the transfer function minus the phase angle of the denominator, which would be the phase angle of node 3 minus the phase angle of node 1, but node 1 has a phase angle of 0. Found the frequency 159 and 1.59, and I connected it up with a straight line. That's my dotted line. You can see here my actual curve passes through this point, which is my 45 degree point for the form 5, lifted up by 180 degrees. My worst error is actually here at 1.59 and 159 is a 5.7 degree difference between the actual curve and the asymptotic approximation. So this is all possible answers, and this is an approximation to those answers, which is three straight line segments. This last example, we call the circuit an audio frequency integrator, and this is because it had a Bode plot with a slope of minus 20 dB per decade from about 16 hertz to 10 kilohertz, which is roughly the audio band. Let's use P-Spice to show what this circuit would do to a one kilohertz square wave with an amplitude of five volts. Let's see if we can explain the response using our transfer function. In order to do this, I need to show you how to make a square wave in PSPICE or the SPICE program. Here's a general definition of a pulse. It has a level V1 and V2. It's called a time delay, this interval, where we have the value of V1. Then we have a fall time, a pulse width, a rise time, and then a time that we're back to the V1 voltage again. And the, the difference between this time and this time is the period. I'm using a one kilohertz square wave, so I'm gonna make the period one over one kilohertz or one millisecond. We're gonna go from five volts to minus five volts. So five minus five for V1 and V2. I'll make the time delay a quarter cycle, which would be a quarter of one millisecond, 0.25 milliseconds. And then pick my fall time based upon my transient analysis. So I'm gonna do, I don't know, say four cycles, four milliseconds. Divide that by 400 and you get 10 microseconds. I want at least 200 points on the screen. Fall time or the rise time can't be any smaller than the print step. Put down here for the fall time 10 microseconds and likewise for the rise time. I want this pulse width to be half of the period, but I also have a fall time. Half the period would be half of one millisecond or 0.5 milliseconds. And then if I subtract off this extra little piece here, which is 10 microseconds, I get 0.49 milliseconds. Take the same file we had before. We'll do a dot transient analysis do four cycles, print step of 10 microseconds giving me at least 400 points, and then my ceiling step the same, and I'll use the user initial condition because I don't want to have an initial condition on the capacitor. To run the simulation, you can see what happens. Apply node voltage one, which is my voltage source, and you can see my time delay of a quarter of a cycle, a very short fall time, pulse width, which is about half a millisecond, and then a rise time very short, and then the rest of that waveform to give me a period of one millisecond, and it just repeats itself. So whatever the period is, going to repeat that. So you just get this one time delay, and then you get this waveform, just repeated. Here's my output. I've got a triangle wave. It's going between roughly minus 12.45 and 12.3. Let's use a transfer function to explain why we're seeing a triangle wave. Our transfer function is minus 10k over s plus 100, and if the frequency is high enough, we can ignore the 100. So if our frequency is greater than 15.9 hertz, this term is very small. So we roughly have our transfer function as minus 10k over s. What's 1 over s? It's equal to an integral. So I have minus 10k times the integral then of vn, say from 0 to t, of dx. So I'll have my function at the end as a function of t plus initial conditions. Start out with zero initial conditions that kind of go from there. Minus 10k, the integral, say from 0 to t. And I have 5 volts for this first increment. Take the integral of that. And then we can evaluate it at maybe the endpoints and see where it's going. So bring the 5 out in front. So you get a minus 50k. The integral of 1 dx is x. Upper limit minus the lower limit, which would be t minus zero. So I get a negative ramp. So we're seeing exactly that it's going down. And then at t equals zero, we have zero. And at t equals to 0.25 milliseconds, plugging in here, I get 12.5 volts, but negative, And I have very close to the value here. So what happens next? Well, the input changes from plus five to minus five. The integral now of minus five from a quarter to as long as this lasts, which is three quarters of a millisecond. Again, times at minus 10k. I do have an initial condition. That's where the last voltage ended. The voltage at the output is equal to minus 12.5 volts at t equals 0.25 milliseconds. Now the voltage can't jump instantaneously here because it's related to the capacitor voltage around the loop between the output, the capacitor, and the voltage across the input of the outamp, which is very small. Integrate this now, I'm going to get constant out in front, so I get a minus 10k times minus 5, so plus 50,000 times the integral of 1 dt, which is going to be t, Evaluating that integral at the upper limit minus the lower limit, then I have a plus 50k times 0.75 milli minus 0.25 milli, and then I've got this initial condition of 12.5. Turns out to be 12.5 volts at 0.75 milliseconds. I mean, there's three quarters of the period. Let's see what we have up on top here. We have 
296, and we were calculating roughly 12.5, ignoring the rise and fall time. Then lastly, we call our audio frequency integrator, which took a square wave and converted it to a triangle wave. As an example of what's called a first order low pass filter. In other words, the general form of the transfer function is some k over s plus alpha. And these are some of the properties of an audio frequency integrator.